Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Bushwick Bears Petty Crime Review. We're talking breaking and entering with comedian writer Ryan Donahue. I am Ryan Donahue. You might have seen Ryan on our live show, which is every Wednesday, 9 p.m. at the stand. Use promo code BEARS for half off tickets and come fuck with the Kings of Wednesday. Arr, arr, arr. Harmar superstar is by any yeah, chance? Yeah, I know I the name. Harmar. He's a mailman now, that, but, he, he but he's happy. Be... He posts about it and says he likes it. Okay, and stuff. that that like hurt my soul a little bit. Hey, I nothing wrong Harmar. with delivering the yeah, fucking I love mail. Him too. No, I've seen him live just... a ton. Oh wow, he's like a singer. He's like a really good like modern, but like kind of throwback like soul, soul type, type of singer. singer yeah. But he was also in um, a bunch of those like. Uh, Movies that were musicals, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, like, like in the Heights. No, like uh, <laughs> fuck. What is it called? West Side Story. What are the movies? That I he don't. Was I, in? I, he was. He was just. He, I just loved his records. He's a really good music. Yeah, uh, musician. Yeah, but do you know how it feels to get your mail delivered by a motherfucker who can belt? That's oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he he, he kind of looked almost like he. He was like the one of the things. And I. I bet you. You know what? This would get old too. Is he kind of look like Ron Jeremy in a way? Like he did a little bit. Balding, a little pudgy. And one of his things that he would like get down to his underwear and just bell. And like, I think after a while you got to be like, it would be like, you're like, you're like, dude, I'm a really good at what I do. And all people do is talk about my looks. I can see how that would drive me fucking crazy. I mean, right? his fans love him, but I will say I sensed insecurity and I felt bad about this. My friend and I went to see him and afterwards we asked to take a picture with him and my friend's girlfriend was like just kind of being weird while taking the picture so she didn't mean any harm she was just like laughing we were drunk and i think he got the impression that we were like doing something making fun of him by taking the picture and then he just got like mad uncomfortable i felt bad almost i'm like we weren't even trying to do anything i could just tell he got weird vibes because we were having so much fun and like laughing but not in a way that seemed to include him. you're the reason he's a mailman (laughs) <laughs> Thanks, Boris. Honestly, yeah. I think more creatives, when when giving up on the thing they're pursuing, need to bring that talent into the thing they end up doing. <laughs> like, if you can sing and you get a cubicle job, fucking sing in that cubicle. Like, so often we become bitter and we're like, well, it didn't work out, so now I'm gonna fucking do mortgages or whatever. Just be a you know? grumpy right. mortgage guy. Yeah, all the but time. it's like, no, bring the funny into something. You know, there's so many like people that could just like use that skill to make the world better instead of just throwing <laughs> it away. Because because it didn't yield them cash. Right. Yeah, I thought about going into being like a psychiatrist or something if I quit. Oh, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> you should do mortgages is what he's saying. <laughs> no way. I No, because I could use my skill style. You know fact, what? I, I think c- you'd be a good job is to like uh, help out uh, endangered or at-risk youth. Probably like a scared, you, like a scared at risk kid. of what? I, like you know, bad kids turning out. Like, <laughs> okay, don't follow your <laughs> dreams, guys. Yeah, that's true. I should start a scared. Get a vocation. Straight, a scared straight for uh, comedy. You know Dude, what I, mean? I did like, a because uh, for every kid who thinks it's, I'll be fine. No, you won't, bitch. I had a, you have no idea the insecurity you're gonna go through. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold, <I've> had- <laughs> hold my belt loop and call me Jeff Singer. Uh-huh. You know, like, <laughs> I, uh, I I was in I did a show in Philly, went well, and the kid who was the host was like, "Hey, there's this fucking open mic show down the road. You want to come with me?" I had nothing going on. I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll go with you. Hang out with these kids. Go." And and I got to admit, it wasn't this was rude of me, but I was on such a high, and I went up and I and there was like 50 audience members plus like 75 comedians, and I knew three people in the room, so I went out there. Like a material, guns blazing. I cheated, right? Sure. I went up and I to, by doing well. Yeah. yeah. By, 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 by doing there's a, too there's well. a little, but I get what you mean. Not too well, but like they're all there trying shit out, and if you're there and running I, your, I come and I just I put a flamethrower to the room, okay, right? Okay, okay, And I, I knew what that. I was doing, and I wasn't, and and it was unapologetic, like, unapologetically. Let's go. And I had a, but I was we were, came I up started, there. I ain't afraid of you, motherfucker. That's, I kind of did that, and uh, afterwards, like there were like three or four young guys that wanted to go out drinking with me, which never happens in New York. So I was like, "Yeah, let's fuck yeah, let's do it. We're going, we're partying, we're going to all these bars in Philly, we're having a great time." And uh, the the host, I can, I think that night I convinced him to quit comedy forever, but from a place <laughs> of love, I was like, "Dude, 
Like really, like the best you're gonna do is like sixty grand a year, and you got to work like fifty weekends. Honestly, that's <laughs> the kind of talk that a lot of people. It's like a weird thing where you need to know it's not necessarily defeat, right? Like I thought I wanted to play music. That was like my whole thing before I did stand up, and I was I had friends who were musicians who were amazing and playing with fucking famous people now and they should be because they're great but i didn't have that thing in me i couldn't right i couldn't get past i music i felt this pressure to be cool in a way where like once i tried comedy and i was like oh i can be a fucking like pathetic that's awesome <laughs> yeah. it was like such a pressure <laughs> off i could just me. wallow yeah. in this. yes i can just kind of like permission to just be the worst that's so great you know right, yeah instead of always having to like fedora my way to something you know not that i was there but you know right but so like that said it's like you know to be able to walk away from the thing and then have that just be okay instead of this huge defeat it's yeah. like no this just isn't the thing for you but comedy somehow has this thing with it where you feel like if you don't do it then you're just not a man or you're not a woman or i don't know whatever it is it's like so much self-worth identified with stand-up because it's so personalized because like you're really at the most base level where like you don't have an instrument you can't be like well you know whatever like you know the setup was wrong or, or blah 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 it's like after a while they're just rejecting you. Oh, for sure. Right. Yeah. It's not your ability to do something. It's just like this is the most personable you can really be. But it's just there's some people that are just way funnier in a Costco. Like I'm not funny. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not yeah. funny at a wedding. I'm I'm almost yeah. I'm almost miserable. Right. <laughs> but yeah. on stage, I'm funny. You know? Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Some yeah, people, yeah. some uncles are fucking hilarious at yeah. football games. You're going to have someone that like tricks you into thinking that you're doing a show but it's their wedding that they're inviting you to they just want you to be in a good mood <laughs> yeah <laughs> well that's also the thing too where like if you have like a funny uncle or a funny cousin and then your family to you is like hey they're really funny i bet they could do comedy yeah. probably better better than you were like, <laughs> like you know what you have you don't remember when i was cousin billy i, I used to be cousin billy when i was younger but then i became a comedian and turned into this yo my least favorite jokes are the ones where it's like i was walking down the street and then this homeless guy said some hilarious shit to me, and I'm always just like, well, then get that, that guy, guy on the stage. Yeah, yeah. Well, your thing about the guy who said the funny thing is not the thing that's funny. Right, you're not funny because you noticed that was funny. I just I just always wanted to be as funny as the dudes that that sat out and waited in line for at the at the labor the day labor place. Yes. You ever walk by like the dudes that are like borderline homeless and all they do is they just work so they have enough money for the day and go the, you I used to have to walk by one of them a, a group there was a day labor place I walked by to go to the work every day and those dudes those like and there was like a couple white dudes a couple black dudes a couple mexican dudes they were all, but they were all like the same like construction worker basically homeless dudes and they would roast every single person that walked by and I was like I'll never be as funny as those guys but are. that's right, the perfect yeah. north star in my opinion yeah. like sure. I'm yeah, really yeah. not I'm not into the north star of ambition or right? I'm like no p funny is just for its own sake yeah. And when yeah. people try to commodify it and whatever, that's when it can get weird and gross. And so it's like just find just staying true to that feels like the correct impulse. You got to train opinion. very hard just to be the construction guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm, this is quietly a, an aside, but I'm thinking if this goes south, it'd be so funny to just like. I would love to make like a hot iron sound too. You put it in like. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> I, sparks, dude! I yeah, I love it. That was a that was a fun time. I I oh, I wanted to tell you guys this. It was so funny. Speaking of Harmar Superstar, mm -hmm. uh, in like probably 2006 or something, I was working at a hotel, and uh, him and Justin Long, they were on this like they were on a road trip because they were working on a screenplay together. I don't think anything ever came of it. Yeah, yeah. no, that doesn't. Justin sound like Long, the number. Apple Kid. Yeah, the Apple okay. Kid. So, but at the they came to the bar. They were down at the bar. We were chummy chummy for a second, and they're like, "Yeah, come up to the room. We'll have some drinks." Came up. I just did so much cocaine and drank so much fucking with whiskey Harmar? with Harmar and oh. Justin Long. How did you even not say this? Immediately? I know. I was like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't. I was like, gonna, I was trying to find the thing to come in. I was like, I have to go back to it because it was hilarious, and we didn't like all. We didn't talk about. The entertainment business at all yeah it was just three strangers getting too wasted you know that like cocaine ramble where you just are talking nonsense yeah we, here's, for hours we were okay the other night at at a show uh myself jericho 
and Mike Christine were standing around talking. Mm-hmm. We were talking about moving. I don't want to talk about comedy. Moving. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We were talking about moving and like manual labor. And Mike was talking about a job, a specific job about having to go to a specific place or whatever. And someone interrupted the conversation <laughs> to fucking like network. Oh, shit. and like, and then took over the conversation to the point where like, we just stopped talking to Mike Jericho's just rolling his eyes at this person. She, bo- she literally boxed I didn't me out of them, but sure. <laughs> of the, this, 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 this human, and like literally boxed me out of it. And we were having a pretty, I don't know, a masculine conversation. We we're talking about manual labor. Yeah. And, and she like literally boxed me out, and I just stood there, and I was like, "Do I want to?" I was inspired by. I didn't say anything. I didn't because I, I still have that thing where I'm, I'm still nice to people and sometimes I hate it. <laughs> but there's a, a comic that we all know who is way more secure with himself than I am. And I, I was talking to him at a bar and the same thing started to happen. And he literally and some people might think of this as mean. I thought it was so funny because she inter- interrupted the conversation. But he goes, go climb elsewhere. Perfect. Yeah. Wow. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can go back to talking about how shitty Indiana is. Right. Well, yeah. so I've I mean, been around a literal campfire, like <laughs> talking about, you know, salmon. <laughs> and someone came in with like, you know, networker voice and like was talking about the bit. And I'm like, dude, we're outside by a fire. Like yeah. people have done this since forever. This should be a bonding experience on some primal <laughs> life is great thing and you're bringing like jimmy fallon into this <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like why but right, yes right. i will do your show on saturday but still no, no, but the thing is though is like what i've discovered though about myself and i think this relates a little bit back to why we keep doing stand-up so much is like i, I got into like reading and watching on youtube um interviews with bands and my favorite interviews were always the ones where they were doing like gear rundowns and to hear the guys talk about their gear and the technical shit that goes into it and hearing people who are just like, cause like if you know enough musicians after a long enough time, it's just a business too. Yeah. Like you're not thing. a rock and roll Metallica are billionaires. They're not rock and roll dudes anymore. They're a business. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's a thing where it's like, eventually <laughs> you all fucking give into what it really is or you flame out and die young and are way cooler. Um, but well, you're like, good enough to have a manager. That does seem to be the two choices, yeah. I mean, really, <laughs> honestly, I mean, you can't or you just, like, mature into something I different. I really think the only way to be, like, genuinely cool and white is to be, like, <laughs> teetering on the brink of a heroin overdose <laughs> right. at all times. <laughs> yeah. Like, you need to be slowly disappearing. <laughs> it's so true. My dad it's was so fucking like, cool. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, honestly, all those guys, like, anyone who was ever cool and white on our, and, and that aged well is always half visible. Like, you can't, like, we James of fear that you'll we disappear. We never saw all of James Dean's face, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Like it was always just kind of never showed us too much. <laughs> right. You're always like there but not there. There's a fucking Johnny Depp almost succeeded and then we saw his whole face and we were like, ah no. Yeah, the Phantom of the Opera as mentioned. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I like it when people are into their thing and like that's usually what happens when you're around other comics, you usually talk about that, but like you know, it was just like everybody's done enough of that it, it, for this one juncture. Well, there, and to have somebody just stick their nose. Well, in, at like, the end of the at the at the end of the day, it was three friends having a conversation, and in a social sitting when you're at a bar in a show and there's a lot of people, there's a way that you handle it, and you're like, hi, 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 I'm so and so, or if oh I haven't met you, you know, there's social cues, but literally to like box me, I'm double their size. And in reality, I could snap your neck like a twig. I'm not here for this. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I no, but there's just like basic social cues that I was like, I was like, we all, everyone involved knew exactly what was going on because there was no social etiquette. But yeah. I also well, that's just yeah, immaturity. I don't know. It's yeah, like you fo- you go into a room, read the room. What's going on? Instead of just like, hey, I'm here and I have this thing I would like to address and change everything. And it's like, well, what? level of entitlement are you working from when you're thinking that that matters right yeah. or not that it be, should not to be too woke about it but there are some people though that literally just can't read that stuff that like 
you know, sometimes if I, if I can tell that somebody's just weird like that, I might be more tolerant. That's real. Of it. Well, normally yeah. that is Racine. I. <laughs> <laughs> and in the fact that he was the normal part of this conversation. Honestly, that has happened to me over the pandemic, where like I had enough space from all of this to kind of look at everything and be like. Oh, I think I've been getting annoyed at someone who's like mentally like they're not. not yeah, all they're the on the there. spectrum. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. But I mean that and uh, we all are on some level. So, I mean, we I wouldn't be we, here. If yeah. We yeah. That's yeah. why it's a spectrum. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the spectrum yeah. is like we're my spectrum it, boys. At. <laughs> it's pretty wide. The spectrum <laughs> It's wide. But there's but there's a narrow part of the far width that stand up occupies. Like like there's some like there's like this part of the spectrum where it's mostly autistic and then th there's a subset of that that seems to be comedy instead of like but there's an over, there's saying? an overlap for sure there is you know what the comedy is a weird yes. thing where like in the same job the same job description with the same duties at your job you can have someone who is like so incredibly attractive man or woman and they have the exact same job as someone who's a a, a gargoyle and they're both good at it, and they both get paid well, and they—that's a lot of jobs. Well. That's, that's true in I, tech. Is, is <laughs> right. that true in tech? I, I, I've never yeah, worked in an true, office. Yeah. I don't, I've never worked in an office. I've never worked in tech. In my in my job, in like the bar, there there are very good people, and then there are people who like have to run their asses off. The people that are just like workers, right? That's the only difference. In, I like in, all the people with PhDs who have the same job I do. I think I think it's hilarious. Are you arguing for segregation based on being hot or not? <laughs> I'm not arguing. No, I'm, he's I, saying it's fascinating. It's just that fascinating. You can bring so much to this thing that in such because it's truly a phantom. It's not actually a thing. It's not actually comedy a thing. is not real, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's truly like whatever you bring to the stage <laughs> is like you, but like we're not all doing the same thing. That's an illusion. The right. fact that yeah. we, you know, it's like yeah. everyone's bringing their own, you know, universe to this fucking empty canvas. Speaking of bringing things to the table. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, do I have something to bring? I think, well, I, we <laughs> yeah. don't know because you, well, you refuse to reveal well, that no, here's, information. Here's, I mean, here's, here's kind of my segue to this whole thing because we were, we're like so deep into comedy. When I got into comedy, right, and the reason I was so attracted to it is that most of the people that did comedy were like, drug addicts ex-cons mm -hmm. grifters yeah. like they weren't good people they were great people but they weren't they were like it was like the dregs of society yeah yeah but there's doesn't mean just because these people are attractive that they're good i mean i know a lot of them they're objectively terrible i'm not talking about being no, people being attractive about, it's anymore. like uh the the island of the misfit oh. toys it was the island of the misfit toys exactly I'm also what comedy is now as, as opposed to what you're saying is now like oh I'll say my my dad was a um, semi professional catch and release tournament fisherman. Sure. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, the you, same you phenomenon, believe it or not, exists in that field as well. Right. Where it's a lot of you know. It's like <laughs> yeah, he stabbed the guy in Johnston and did five years, but that he, that guy could fish. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> like, he's probably pretty fucking great. It's literally <laughs> us being like, well, yeah, you know. He rapes, but he's funny. Yeah, but that's <laughs> not you know not that I would ever say that. But you, you know, there were so many people that was like, oh yeah, he did he did ten years, and now he can't get a job anywhere else. And now he's just got to funny his <laughs> ass off. In order, it, there's something to be said for this is where you end up at the end of Raging Bull. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like working <you're> <laughs> some manual labor job. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, now that I can't do the thing for real, let me, uh, you know, make you feel <laughs> awkward with a couple of yuck yucks. You know, it's like it's crazy that that's where he ended up, and that's where I was like, I'll start here at 22. You know? Yeah, there were so so many so many criminals in the in the in that world, and I used to love it. Like there was a lot of uh, there was criminals and Vietnam vets. There was mm -hmm. always the <laughs> That's a lot of manual labor jobs, construction jobs. Like if you're 50 and a white dude and st still doing like construction outside, you probably got a record or something. Well, I'm probably generalizing too yeah, much. Yeah, you're generalizing. <laughs> I, happen to, I happen to have recently. Yeah. That's how you know you've been in Greenpoint too well, long. Well, like, <laughs> I know I've been in Pennsylvania and I happen to have recently dealt with like contractors and literally two of them are like one's an ex-con, another one's a veteran that yeah. like might be an ex-con. It's yeah. just pretty common from my experience. It is, it is. So was your it's dad, all of them, so actually. Was your, <laughs> so was your dad one of those people that was also... Fully. Okay, he yeah. was also like a, yeah. a pretty criminal, shady Absolutely, guy? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like several... Uh, it was like 
multiple high speed chases. <laughs> um, you know, like these are the so stories. He's the cool kind. He was cool. Yeah. But it's like this thing where I grew up being told that was cool, but then if I got in trouble, then you know what I mean? It's like, right. well, what's the right thing to do it's here? Contradictory. Because I thought it was dope to, you know, yeah. get in trouble. Like my dad had a gun, like for criminal purposes, and it's like, I'm not supposed to beat kids up at school to solve problems. That. He, Seems contradictory. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's Especially very, when I could beat him up. But I'm of the opinion that white people just simply don't parent their children across <laughs> the board. <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's any value placed on parenting in the white world because we can trust society to raise us like each other. Like, oh, I don't have to parent my kids because the cops will take care of them and and teachers and da da da. But when you're right. black in America, you literally have to fucking make sure these kids know how to be adults because if they don't, they could slip up and get <laughs> fucking killed. That's why they let killed. them. That's why there's no curfew. Yeah, like I truly believe if my dad was not a white man, he would be dead. Like he was so <laughs> careless and suicidal <laughs> with his fucking high speed chasing bullshit that it's like there's no way. It's like Liam Neeson and fucking. Uh, taken or like you know good time that it's like these characters would die in the first scene of a movie if they were not like you know yeah white there's, there's some dudes when you see like a dude get in, whenever i hear about someone in multiple high speed chases it's like that's not like, a black man that's not a black dude doing <laughs> i mean that. let's not, not forget oj simpson but he's, he on. did that was one everybody gets one that was one that was one slow speed chase <laughs> that was, yeah by the way he's in a like, bronco yeah he was only going like four 45, 55. And they had so many cops on, you know? Yeah, and everybody got out of his way. That was more like a parade. parade. That was like a wedding. That was a parade, yeah. By the way, I don't know that this is true, but I've I've heard and I forget. It could have been a fucking homeless person on the side (laughs) of the road or my grandma. I don't know who said it. But I've heard that it's said that it was actually his son. Yeah. I've I've heard that as well. I have read it. No, that was a theory back then, too. And he was covering for his boy. Well, I mean, his son was like 16. There right, was what happened. And I read I feel like I read that on like a GeoCities style site of like <laughs> the truth behind the OJ Simpson yeah. story. No, but there was a lot of stuff where I was like, that is a lot of he because he ha- had a gun. There was something with like a gun buried somewhere or something. Yeah. And or a knife. In and the he backyard. had behavioral issues and was, you know, upset. Yeah. But it's like this weird thing where I feel like we do a lot of work to sort of. uh you know, make murderers look good sometimes. Yeah. Or that's interesting. Well, OJ is innocent, as proven in a court of law. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you're right. Fair, no, you're not fair, wrong. I can't enough. say not in Florida so civil court. That, yeah. Right. So if his kid did it, it looks like. But I found myself like defending Mike Tyson recently because I'm like, well, he wasn't raised, and he was just found on the side of the road, and uh, and then this girl was like, yeah, but he was a, he raped somebody, and I'm like, ah, but yeah. He you says he me. didn't do it. No, he's. Oh, you're yeah, right. He's, he's like I. I mugged an old woman and stole her purse, but I did not rape yeah. that woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember that. And there were there there's there's some questionable things about that. But my thing is, and Mike Tyson uh, would lie. He'd mug an old woman and steal her purse. But 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 no. But my thing with that is like at this point he did serve his time. That's true. He, he I mean, he it, like as a society, how are we supposed to pre- preach any sort of reform that even if someone does say he did did it and made a mistake. He went to jail, served his time, and are we supposed to still not let him work? You know, like right. Well, I guess let him letting him work and sort of uh, putting him looking in the up to him is a, a different thing, right? Because I true. I found myself like truly being a most because I have invested a lot of time into understanding who he is. I find him to yeah. be such an American story. You yeah, know? right. And uh, yeah, this person just kind of undercut that with that, <laughs> and I was like. Yeah, I got to think on that for a year. <laughs> did you steal memorabilia, Ryan? Is that why you're here? I That's the actually one crime OJ th- did commit. I did steal memorabilia, but I'm not going to I'm not here to talk about that, but oh. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I dude, I would steal sports cards all the time. That's that was hilarious. my shit. From uh-huh. Target. We talked we talked the other night yeah, at about length. how much money I have sitting in my <laughs> Dude, I was obsessed with baseball cards, so I was stealing those from like I was like 8 to 10 and I was loading my pockets at like Target. I because look, I'll, I to this day, stealing from a corporation, go nuts. I don't think it's bad. I'm gonna be honest. I think sure. it's bad to steal from a mom and pop shop or a human being home or some shit. But if it's a Target, fucking steal. That's how I feel they about it. They do price it in. 
They do. They they do. Like they estimate what their losses. It's are. It's also just yeah. like what if I steal from Whole Foods? Whose pockets are Amazon? I'm gonna I'm gonna take money from Amazon. It's like well, he doesn't pay taxes, so fuck it. Exactly. I do. No, none of the none of these huge of corporations. That's kind of do. funny that that's the taxes that society just steals from. <laughs> that's the least we could do. <laughs> what I heard, in I, my I, opinion, I heard someone say it's like, yeah, you could save twenty percent off your order by stealing two things. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's usually yeah. how I'll do it. If I'm gonna be honest, I will I will buy something. Thing, and then steal something of equal or greater value at the same, at the <laughs> same feel time. feel better about paying so much for that first. Thing. Yes, and I'm like, well, really, now I paid $10 for a pack of gum, two packs of baseball cards, and a retain, you know, whatever the hell it is. They're, that sounds uh, about right. They're on, they're, they were on to you, so now they put them behind the counter, right? Yeah. But they, I noticed at the Walgreens over on um, Knickerbocker, or it's like the Rite Aid, there's behind the counter, there's like some Pokemon cards, but it's directly <laughs> next to like the dildos and vibrators that they sell at Rite Aid now. They're like right next to each other. And truly, I think at the point that you have money, right? Like I've just recently got enough money to not, I don't steal right now, but it's like because I have a little bit of money. But it's like when I didn't have money at all and fucking Target was making like $9 on a fucking, what, I do not feel bad at all. I don't feel guilty for any of that. But that's not the thing you're here to talk about. No, not at all. Okay. So, all right. When I was young, <laughs> I grew up in the middle of nowhere, shit town, nothing to do. My lo- my older brother, uh, basically like managed to st- uh find the master key to the high school that Woo! I went to. Wow. And, and so he copied it, and when he graduated, he gave it to me, and so I had it. And so it was just this fun little thing that I could do. Where it's just I was, fun like, knowing. Yeah. Go yeah. into yeah, just go into like a rafter thing or like go up on the roof or whatever. And it was like a nice little thing that I uh could do for fun, you know. And uh, it was a fun little like like one time I so one time I threw a party before school and uh, like because seniors didn't have to be in until like 11 a.m. So I was like, all right, everybody, my house, fucking beer pong, it's like 7 a.m., you know. Yeah. And so we all got real drunk beer. and and then we drove to school. <laughs> very stupid. I it's w- the middle of nowhere. That's middle what you do. Of no- that's what yeah. you do. There's what nothing do. to do. Yeah. There's Forget nothing to do. Nowhere. You do that in Jersey. <laughs> you, no, but I mean, literally, like, Jersey's you're just... kind of the middle There's of nowhere, no really. exterior anything. So yeah. it's like, let me just... I've never even... I don't know what stand-up comedy is. I don't know that there are intermediate levels of to pursuing anything. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. And so, yeah, we just got drunk. It was fun. Go to school. And I, like, walked into a classroom that I wasn't in, and I was just talking to my friend there. I went to school in a Tigger suit. Like, I was not hiding the fact that we were fucking drunk. But it, they don't care. You know, they yeah. right. the Outsiders was required reading. Like, they didn't expect us to do great yeah. in life. <laughs> right. They're yeah. like, are you a greaser or a soch? And that's right. all that fucking matters. Like, identify that. Greaser, and, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And so... uh then um <laughs> <laughs> so point being uh i got kicked out of this class and they like locked the door and i was like well fuck you i'm gonna open this shit and i go back in you know like little <laughs> moments like that so that was what was fun about having the key right yeah. and so one night it's like a friday i'm waiting for a buddy he's at a concert at lupo's in providence this is i grew up in rhode island and so i'm like well we got a couple hours to kill let's go to the school and fuck around you know so i go and i know one of the doors is like kind of like broken or whatever so i just like opened it you know and we walk in and we're like swinging on the ropes in the gym and like walking around with our pants down in the hallway and writing things on people on teachers uh blackboards and stuff like that like harmless shit yeah and uh go into the cafeteria get some fucking candy bars you know what i'm saying and then like uh we are hanging out having fun and then we go to the outside of the school to like get back to the car and there's like two cop cars parked on either side Just ready of our you. car and there no one in there they went into the school like r- looking for the <laughs> culprits yeah. oh of this f- of yeah. this B and E you know yeah and so uh i'm like oh shit i got a bunch of weed in there you know so I go and I get my bag. It's like weed and like a little bit of booze. And I like bring it into the woods and just drop it behind a building. And then by the time I like get back out to the car, uh, the cops are, you know, guns drawn and whatever. And we're like, oh, shit, you know, it's just candy, Powerade. Oh, wow. And uh, they uh, arrested us. I put the master key in my sock. Smart. Um, cause I knew that if I were to get caught with that, I would have to pay to replace all of the locks in the school, which I think comes out to like 40 grand or some shit. Oh, Jesus Christ. And so I, uh, I had that in my sock and we just kind of spent the night in the cell. 
<laughs> um, and I, the charge was breaking and entering and larceny, which I felt was a bit much. Yeah. Larceny. Yeah. I, it was like they're really trying to punish you. It was literally. It's yeah. And like I'm waiting for the um, we're waiting to get. Like, the cop is, like, having me retrace my steps while we're in the school, and he's like, where were you thinking of going to college? And I was like, oh, like, here or here. I don't know. He's like, well, you made a lot of real interesting decisions tonight that might affect that. Like, really trying to, like, <laughs> yeah. rub it in that yeah. I'm a piece of shit in right, this moment. Yeah. You know, it's like, I know, you know? Yeah. You fucking old idiot. You, I wonder, right. do they, if they... That's how he ended do up they as a cop. Tr- do mm-hmm. they, tr- at, at cop training... Is that is that a class or do they just all naturally have that ability? No, it's class resentment that comes with the job. Oh, fair enough. And so, uh, yeah, <laughs> naturally, you know, we're four white kids. It was like ultimately fine. I was 17. I got charged with like uh, 30 hours of community service. The judge truly like laughed. He was like, so you took candy bars from the school? Granted, the master key part of it was not part of the yeah, thing. It was just like I that. opened a janky door and I fucking went in and yeah, hung, hung right. out at the school. And so then, uh, yeah, it was uh, 30 hours of community service for which I folded a uh, a, a man's laundry who uh, happened to own, like, a camp um, and was just – he just wrote me off for 30 oh, hours. Nice. I, like, folded his laundry once, and he's like, yeah, all right, you're cool. And then I didn't have to do the hours, and that was my little, uh, you know, miscreant moment. There. One time I had to do community service uh, – and I thought it'd be a good idea because I like, you know, I think animals are cool. And I was like, oh, I'll do it. I can. They, they said I could do it at Petco. Do like my 40 hours of community service for a, just working free for a corporation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but they like, no, they like I had to do all the worst, like cleaning out shit of cages. And I had to do all that. And I was like, this sucks because a time before I did community service and I just went to Goodwill. And they literally just had me in the back, like pricing shit. They didn't care at all. They're like, I was like, how do I? Like when they, you know, in the back of like the, the Goodwill where you drop shit off and then there's someone there that grabs it and then I, they like price it and put it on the shelves. It's like, how do I price it? They're like, make it up. We don't care. <laughs> like literally I could do anything. I was like 69, 69, <laughs> 666. And I was like, ooh, I want this. 50 cents. Yeah. You know? And yep. so, but the, and I was like, but that was so boring. And like sometimes you get old people's clothes and they stink. I was like, I don't want to do that. But then I was like, Petco. That sounds good. It was a. I was one of the worst decisions I ever made. When you know, I was, uh, did you just have to like put down a bunch of animals. No, I didn't have to put them down. <laughs> Jesus Christ! He's not a millennial who bought a dog in the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. That was did funny. Did you see that whole? Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, hurt, it hurt my soul. Yeah, it's just like, oh my god, I didn't realize I could go outside again. So we had to euthanize my pup. That's you know, crazy. Like, so I that, that happened. That happened also Those after people, it happened several it did like a lot of times. Yeah, after 101 Dalmatians that movie came out, there was a whole thing of parents and families buying Dalmatians and their violent dogs. They are, they are violent dogs. So They're they the worst had dogs. so they had to put down like shitloads this of Dalmatians how after that. Stupid we are as people. Like <laughs> honestly, fucking jaws when that movie came out, like everyone's fear of sharks just skyrocketed to the point where like fishermen were literally just like killing sharks like to yeah. a, to an insane degree over a fake movie yeah. yeah over a movie about a fake shark and uh it was like truly like a point of like almost endangerment because everyone was just like killing like emphatically killing right. sharks they had misconception about like the sharks mostly will like and there was probably a part of steven spielberg that was like man that movie smack you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's how good i look at what i'm movie. doing i'm changing the planet oh, yeah fuck these people's heads up. i almost wiped out a species of animal with <laughs> i have a i flick. have a couple questions yeah sure what'd you do with the key uh i kept it and then it ultimately just like got lost in my shit. But oh, I, you didn't pass it down to the next. <laughs> it got generation. lost in your sock. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, the school ended up getting a bunch of money, um, because, uh, dude, listen to this. This is wild. So, uh, whatever. I'm not gonna name names. So the year after I graduate, right? I told you, middle of nowhere, all white school. This is the most homogenous fucking town in Rhode Island. It's the most. It's the whitest school. Well, it's in Rhode Island. No, but <laughs> Rhode Island, Providence, Central Falls, you, there's other towns that where there's like, you know, it's not all just okay. Caucasians. But uh, but Foster Gloucester definitely is. That's where I'm from. And so uh, they, the year after I graduated, hired a cop to protect the school 
because on our survey we were had the biggest drug problem out of every school. <laughs> sure. Because it's just a bunch of white kids yeah, yeah. stealing pills from their parents yeah. and fucking smoking weed and do, having nothing to do growing up at the fucking sticks with adults who ran away from everyone and everything raising them. Yeah. So naturally, <laughs> what the hell are we supposed to do other than run away from everyone and everything with drugs? So they hire a cop to protect us from ourselves, apparently. But there's no violence in this shit, right? So this cop then... Uh, goes on to, um, I don't know, have a little thing with a 16-year-old girl. Ooh. Wow. Uh, yeah, he's like 45 with a family. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus and, uh, Christ. And like, I don't know rules. to what degree it was or was not <laughs> consensual, but ultimately the 16-year-old girl like came forward and was like, hey, I don't feel okay about this, and like told right, if she's the 16, authorities of the school yeah, well, that yeah. this cop, that this was happening. Then no one could find the cop for like two or three days. And then they found him... Uh, they found his body in the park next to my dad's house. Oh, damn. Wow. And he had offed himself eee. because he didn't want to face what he had done. Yeah. And then and and this and then now there's no cop at the school anymore. <laughs> oh, right. Like yeah. Cause yeah. he was hired yeah, to protect yeah. the yeah. students. And <laughs> right. all he did was bring a fucking horror story to that graduating. <laughs> class. A literal the craziest horror story. thing is he left a note that said it was that good. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, dude. I hate that riff. <laughs> so I... Um, All right. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I I had a... I got a key to the fence at the school. The fence, hey. They, so we had, like, our schools... The year before I went to high school, they a, a bunch of kids got were getting shot because it was the 90s. In Arizona, and so they they closed Wait, off. Are you all from campuses. like is like a Hickville? Is no, I'm from like a city, but like literally like just gangs be, were a real big problem in the okay. early ni- middle '90s. Got you. And so they closed off all the schools. Like I remember in junior high, there were kids who at the time I thought were adults, but were I'm sure just teenagers, right? Recruiting outside of my junior high for like the 29th Street Bloods. They literally had a dude sit in and then be like, "Hey, come talk to me for a second. And it was like a bot though. He's like, "Hey, come talk to me, Holmes." Like. But but so they so after all that was happening, they closed off the school, so we couldn't leave. There was no coming back. I hear people talk about like stories of like going to lunch off campus. No, it was the gates were locked at, at seven or at eight a.m. on. So if you were late, you also couldn't get in. Right. You know. But I got a, I, I, from one of these other kids. I got a key to the gate. So I fucking went, came and went as I pleased. It was fucking great. But I was chill about it. I didn't tell anybody. Like my one or two friends knew who would go with me. But I didn't make copies or nothing ever. That kid got expelled <laughs> senior year, and he was like a good student. He was like one of those nerdy kids that have. But he was giving. He gave it to a bunch of people. Yeah, see, that's not good. And it yeah, got back to him. I didn't tell thing. nobody. I was just my. It was my treat. That's why nerds always get busted because they they get if they feel cool when they do the thing. <laughs> yeah. So they right. need people to know they do it. Yeah. Instead of just letting it be done. My junior year, the uh, graduating senior class um, were a. a they were actually the socias, but they were trying to like look cool by looking badass because like all the really cool kids in our school were like the badass kids who are all like dead or in jail at this point. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly both. Um, and uh, but they so what they did was one night they went to the local. We had like a Meyer, which is like the, the regional Walmart. Yeah. They went there, they bought a bunch of fucking supplies and shit like that, spray paint, cement, and everything. They went to the school, and they fucking cemented the door shut to the school so that you couldn't fucking open up the doors. Nobody could get in to go to school the following Monday. They fucking spray painted over all the lines in the parking lot and, like, redrew the lines and everything (laughs) like that. They, like, smashed up some shit that was there. And then, not, and then about... I don't know, quarter of a mile, maybe not even like an eighth of a mile down the road. There's an underpass for the the train and everything next to the high school where they all just spray painted their names and everything (laughs) all over it. Like Brady. Sorry, Brady. I know you're a reformed (laughs) Christian now, but Brady Fineski was here. And, you oh, know, yeah. and then, yeah, like the dumbest <laughs> fucking shit. Class of 96, <laughs> E.L. Bausch, High School Rebels. Hello, this is me, Kristen Myers. You know, like, wow. yeah. And so and then they just went and checked the fucking they And so like, OK, well, the local Meyer nearby is, has video footage of them all buying the shit. <laughs> So they all got arrested and a bunch of oh, them, like, lost scholarships. 
Like they actually went yeah. through the things that your guys like threatened. <laughs> that they warned you. Yeah, about, some of yeah. them they weren't allowed to graduate. They like they had to like, you know, I don't know do something stupid to prove they were smart. Over Honestly, the it's at least appropriate that they lost scholarships. That's pretty dumb. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, for sure. Well, here, they probably really need the scholarships because they're so stupid. <laughs> they should learn not to do something so fucking dumb. They right. got to go to college to learn not to do something dumb. <laughs> I mean. Sorry, class of 96, but you guys are a bunch of pricks anyway. The year after I graduated high school, all the like, I, it was like a Model UN, like some kind of like trip with like all the smarter kids. I uh, went to, I think, D.C. and they drilled holes in the bottom of like soda cans and emptied them and filled them with alcohol and soldered them back from the bottom and then like still just got caught because they were drinking in the hotel room and were mad loud and somebody came in and then they like saw but the alcohol they had and like saw this ridiculous fucking plan and a <laughs> bunch of them so hard and a bunch of them were like fucking you know like high SAT score like kids going to Ivy League schools yeah. that like got <laughs> like ruined their fucking shit that year man you what? got I mean you have to get in trouble yeah like that's it's just like kids it's, it's like what we were talking about earlier it's just like kids are just so fucking bored you know especially like if you live in like any version of suburbia oh, or like hold on though what is a model un i've heard that <laughs> phrase or whatever does somebody build a little diorama <laughs> of the un they <laughs> like, like i would fly a plane into that they like <laughs> do united nations like debates but like model them how realistic are those can you like <laughs> like accuse the person of mumbai or wherever and be like hey how come there's so many soccer stadium rapes you know or like something <laughs> like very specific. I don't know. I, I wasn't there, but <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> that was specific. <laughs> what is it like? Yeah, that was very specific. This well, is something so he really cares like, about. Like, I, I love like, when I someone would, outs themselves. Yeah. Just, like, no, no, I would love to see like who has to be the, who has to be model Israel. Go ahead and explain, child, what's happening right now in the <laughs> right. world. Yeah, you're like yeah. you get you get these like 13 year olds and like all right. You're you're Israel and you're Palestine. right and you're Palestine. What do you guys? <laughs> Let's see do? what you guys have to say. I'm sure they How do can you do unpack that. This as kids, we're gonna break into the school this weekend and fight, dude. dude I did uh, the Israel Palestine thing. If you're really like like to try to break that down to someone who grew up where I grew up, it makes <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> like my family, like they don't give they don't see past the Walmart near their house. Yeah, I, don't know, know I think it could be sure. done in five Instagram slides. It's <laughs> no for me it's I literally have to like localize it to be like, hey, all right, remember when like you and Al shared a driveway <laughs> 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 and like the state said it was his driveway first, but then like you came and they said it was also yours and then like you guys just had to kind of fight it out. Right. Without any inter, you know, your families like really have been on that driveway for thousands of years. Yeah, yeah, it's like you really have to do that with these people. Otherwise, it's like it's not gonna. It doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, but to what it. if you know one guy who owns half the driveway controls all the media? <laughs> you know, mm. <laughs> I uh, what dude? So like, what, uh, like breaking in? Like it's funny because I hated going to school, mm -hmm. right? But we used to break into the school all the time. Yeah. To do something like I remember, like we pulled out like the high jump pits and like would jump off the backstop into the high. Like we're committing a crime, but it's just to have more fun, you know. You're, yeah, you're also breaking into the thing that you hate being. That you in. hate going to. Do. But you didn't hate school. You hated being told what to do. I hated being told by what people to do. that you knew were inadequate. That's <laughs> yeah. the thing. When oh, you're God. a public school kid in America. Most of the time, the people teaching you, it's very clear that they are not put together. Yeah. Well. Or when you had that right. moment when you realize that, like, when you're like, you know, when you're 16 or 17 and they're like a teaching student or fresh out of college, and you're like, wait, you're 22. Mm. I'm 16. We're the same, basically. That's, yeah. Right. You know, like, I remember there was a moment we were in school and uh, this kid, Sam Rubin, who is just an absurd human being. I'm sure he's like a fucking scientist now, but he was sitting in class and this the teacher. Uh, she said, uh, oh, man, the soda machine uh, didn't give me my soda. I got gypped. And then Sam Rubin was like, hey, isn't it weird that it's OK to say I got gypped, but it's not OK to say I got Jewed, even though they're both <laughs> people? <laughs> and it's definitely a slur. <laughs> well, now yeah. we, he's kind of proven to be right. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. 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 Right, right. But he was just, he was like, isn't that strange? You know what I'm yeah, saying? He yeah. wasn't like at her about it. And she just goes, I am not racist. <laughs> and literally has a meltdown and starts crying. Jesus. And we're all just kind of sitting there. And she's sitting at her desk, like trying to collect herself. 
And we're just like, I guess we just got to wait for this adult to figure out <laughs> what her to relationship with racism before yeah. we can learn about <laughs> yeah. Nazis or whatever she's teaching. Us. Like, it's yeah. so clear that these people are inadequate I on so many levels. I went through three levels where I was sort of like an asshole in high school. And then a couple of years later, I was like, man, I was really like kind of hard to some of those teachers. And then a few years after that, where I like maybe ran into teachers, especially as an adult in my hometown, I was yeah. like, you know what? I was on to something when I was a little kid. I was actually like, you know, I doubted myself, but I was actually right about some of them. They were fucking assholes. Yeah. A yeah. lot of them uh, sort of need the thing where yeah. they make the kid feel stupid. Uh huh. I remember we were we used to like to play football when we were in first grade, you know, yeah. at recess and shit. And this lady sits us down. She was just a teacher's age. She wasn't even a teacher. She would just watch us at recess. And she had, like, real dark black hair and very white, pasty skin. Looked like Cruella de Vil in this weird way. And she just, like, out of everyone who's graduated from West Gloucester Elementary School, zero have gone on to become professional football players. Like, zero have gone on to be <laughs> anything to do with sports. Zero have gone. And we're all just like, I just like to play. It's just you fun know? Yeah. Like, what is wrong with you, you lady? Yeah. That's that's all. I mean, that's just that's some bitter sports. thing. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, dude. What? It's like nuns, you know. Adults, yeah, adults exactly. Want kids to be fucking miserable. Not all. Not the, all. The miserable ones do. Not. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they yeah. just. It's like that's. Yeah. That's why I don't have kids. I'm like, I'm not gonna want that. Kid kill probably be way better at comedy. Than well, you, you think you have that in you though? You think you have where you would like not want to like let the kid come up? Because I do think that that does happen. But you think. Do you think? No, I don't know. I probably would ride my kids' coattails to whatever success. <laughs> yeah. Can I feature yeah. for you? Yeah. You'd, be yeah. like, you'd be the you'd be the like the football dad, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah. Or or the guy who like uh not my kid, and then like they're like six five and an athlete, and you're like, hey, buddy, remember when? <laughs> right. Yeah. Once he gets drafted. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, you show yeah, up. That, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw he got game. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck you, dude. I was talking about real life. <laughs> dude, I think I'd be the opposite. Like any hardness that I have in my life, it would all. Also, he away. wanted to be a part of those kids' lives, man. <laughs> he was locked up. <laughs> he was locked up on some. He pushed his wife and, <laughs> into the counter, right? And she hit her head. He didn't mean to murder the lady. Show? It's yeah, that shuttle was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh. Jesus, Jesus shuttle. Dude, that's so, dude. One one time, I we, me and my friend broke into the school. We didn't break. All we did it was one of those. The door was open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was at night because we it's a around. shit town, and it's a shit, no, there's exactly. nothing in there. Other there's than paper. absolutely nothing in there. We're like running around, and we saw someone, and got spooked, and so we're like, oh shit. So me and my friend crawled underneath a, a teacher's desk and hid, and. We're just under there, and we we uh, someone comes in the room. We're like, oh my god, we're gonna go to jail, you know? We're we're like te we're like so we're like fucking fourteen, but we're underneath this desk, crammed together, and we're like, oh my god! And I hear and I realize I hear like keys and a mop. It's just the janitor cleaning, uh. and we're so scared. Oh my god! And I think that he gets spooked. He hears us in there, and because all of a sudden he walks out, and the fire alarm goes off. Uh, right and so because i think he's just like what the fuck's going on there's people in here i can't see him i hear him and we're like this but we had been cramped under the desk for so long both of our legs had fallen asleep so we're like running down this field just kept falling down because our legs didn't work and we're so scared i hope that that janitor saw us and just was like these stupid ass kids yeah that's nice you, you need someone who's not a narc to be a you know yeah, right custodian. Is, like what are these dumb ass kids what were they even doing under there you those know? rap scallions just fall and we like our legs were asleep we kept falling and it's like the slowest getaway too this, this is what a dork i am my buddy and i realized we graduated elementary school we were in middle school and we realized the door was like the lock was broken in the back of our elementary school. And we both lived not that far from it. So we went in. We just like I think we went to the roof at first, hung out on the roof, found some kickballs, kicked them off the roof, went downstairs through the gym into like where the storage for the food was. And they had those little ice cream cups that were half vanilla, half chocolate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With and the wooden spoon. Yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. <laughs> oh, you know it. So we each ate a few of those. And then we, like, piled up a bag. And then I got, like, a call of conscience leaving the place with them. And I'm like, we're taking ice cream from the elementary school kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I made them put them both back. Wow. So funny. You could have taken them from the, you know. Yeah, they would have been fine. They would have been fine. They don't give a shit. I know. So I know now. I would steal that ice cream now. Right. I'm not a dumbass fucking eighth grader anymore. 
<laughs> I really uh, this is something that we talk about on or like you know it's kind of like Sam Jay's original thought, but I think it's so good. It's like when you are ra- like poverty. It, so much of what's built into poverty is like the morality of like oh I shouldn't steal X Y or Z thing because that would make me a bad person. Meanwhile, everyone with all of the money is racketeering yep. and fucking driving markets up to take them down to move like every they're breaking all of the rules and the laws, but like. This morality of like I shouldn't steal this ice cream is what keeps us fucking poor. Aside, well, aside opinion. from that as well, it's also like kind of a for some people a mindset where it's like I was taught like being rich is bad or earning money to a certain extent is bad because like rich people are always like bad because they always think ill of the poor mm. no matter what both yep, of those are i was unhealthy. too and you right. you're raised to hate money yeah. and then you don't welcome any money into your life <laughs> and then right you, yeah, and then you yeah. just blame the system for not for like there's certain opportunities you could have taken advantage of that you might not because you don't have that excuse anymore yeah you to, become like it's like you're rebelling against your own self-interest at this point and while the ethos of like yeah a lot of money people are scumbags there's also a lot of people that are poor who are also scumbags, scumbags yeah. You know? right yeah and like, there are some people with money who are decent people yeah like that as yeah. well i mean which you really can't know if you're evil until you're rich yeah like poor true. people exactly. we can only be like petty but like right. once you have like billions, then you get to know. Let's like, see what, what you what do you? with that power. What you do with that power? Yeah. It's hard to judge when this is. I have a <laughs> bit about like the same thing of not judging people for drunk driving if you're in the city, because like let's see what you would do when you have to live in a small town like that when you don't have Uber and fucking subways. It's and a shit. sport, man. It's drunk <laughs> driving is a sport. <laughs> right. When you live w- in a town of five hundred, it's like why would you not mix it up a little bit? Yeah. yeah. You're going to kill yourself just from boredom. I was boredom. so good at it. Dude, just Yo, I bet you were one of the best. <laughs> I was one of the best. I bet you were one of the best. I bet you were varsity, man. I was black. So, and Andretti. obviously when you live in a highly pop- populated area and you know, and like, of course that's bad, but like, bro, when you're going to hit a cow, if only, if anything. Or a deer. And truly like, you're not, you know, it's not the game. The name of the game isn't destroy your car. Like, it's just a matter of like, you know, get from A to B and have fun. It's like, there's fucking ten people who live here, bro. Yeah. Like, we're not really just go here. slow. Yeah, but when you drive reckless, that's when it's you know. Yeah, bad. that's a whole different thing. That is a different thing. Uh, and I would drive reckless but sober. <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, dude, when I I'm, would never drive reckless and drunk. When well, I'm, I'm sober and a car. One thing at a time. <laughs> when I'm sober and a car and I'm legal, like insurance and registration. I don't pay attention to any traffic laws in in a shitty town. Yeah, you're just like fucking. No, even here you're here. like. You think, these Uber, Uber drivers don't. The laws don't matter in New York. The they really don't, don't. Yeah, they don't. They also don't matter. Like when we grew up, uh, there was a a whole thing. No school Foster Gloucester was like what we were known for because we had so much road and driveway in between the people that every time it snowed even a little bit, they couldn't pave all of it to get us let us go to school. Right. Yeah. So because everyone just was so afraid of uh, interacting with everyone else, apparently. And so we would just drive on those roads and like, you know, open the door and like ski. You know what I'm talking about? (laughs) Like, you know, hang on the door and hang on the thing and just like ski with your feet. Just like little dumb shit like that that I would never do now. But it's like. You, you you don't smash mailboxes because you you anyone has taught you how to be inspired. Yeah, you know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> right. This is just the stuff you do because you're like, well, I gotta, I have all gotta this let stuff. Something out. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm gonna just smash the, This guy has a fish on his mailbox, and I hate it, and I just want to <laughs> fucking attack it. You know. We've had a lot of yeah. You know, Post office stuff. Yeah, That's mailbox yeah, smash yeah, yeah. and stuff. We yeah, talked yeah. about mail. Oh, I like mailboxes. how you did that. You brought it all back. And I the- like it. I like <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. I like that we're going over because it means we can cut that front half when we were talking about comedy and talk about how we <laughs> hate when people talk about comedy. It's like, let's yeah, get rid of all that because yeah, it got right? good once we started talking about uh, the fucking... Not uh, comedy. Yeah, 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 not comedy. <laughs> yeah. Which is exactly why Jarek and I were upset about that person interjecting in our conversation we're seeing. Yep. We weren't, I'm bringing it all back right uh-huh. now. To this the is thing just to we say, tried to get out of. This is just to say that your crime um, was not that offensive in, in terms of crime. Which in, crime? The, the, the breaking the and entering. Basically. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the one we're kind of doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. breaking, breaking and entering and larceny. 
I think those are all falsities that were placed upon you. You're just being a little punk. They were just trying to scare you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, well, the cry, the punishment you received from it was not really that big of a deal. It's, I've done community service. It's like it's a joke. Me too. And I had a similar experience where they just wrote the hours for me and didn't really give a shit. Right, yeah. right, right, right. But I mean, when you're your age, I don't know. It's a cool crime, but it's not a not cruel cool. crime. No, I said. <laughs> I don't want it to be cruel. I want it to be cool, like Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a three out of five. It's missing a little bit of wow factor for me. Yeah, I, th- I feel that. <laughs> really? <laughs> Listen, they can't all be five. Out also, of five. I everybody know. here <laughs> did the same thing. I'm yeah. re- like he broke into his school. You broke into a school. Like I, I'm sure I you broke. No, differently. I broke into a place of money. What kind of place? It was this. It was this company that would send out money as a way to like incentivize you to get. It was this weird fucking setup. So you were going for the bag. Yeah, like why break into a school? There's nothing valuable no, no, there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I gonna do? Steal, like play with the, steal a, the, tr- steal the a ropes trophy? in the gym. No knowledge. Uh-uh. I'm gonna steal the knowledge. <laughs> no, because I wanted drugs, so I need money. So therefore, you got to break into a place of money. Uh huh. Yeah. Did you uh, succeed in that, or we did? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What'd you walk away with, if you don't mind me asking? Me personally, not that much, because here's the thing: they sent them out in in one dollar bill increments, so you could steal like a small pallet of it. But it was really only like four hundred dollars. Ah. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. and then between four guys, whatever. Well, I give that three do, out of five. Do the math. <laughs> 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 your, your your crime's three out of five. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> what? Have you ever had anyone come in here and be like, "I killed three people." And, uh, <laughs> I we're waiting. Know. We're waiting. Yeah. For it. yeah. This is really a setup. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being generous today with both, but I'm gonna do five out of five bears because the, there is a wild factor. He's got a fucking skeleton key. That's like. The thing you mysteriously talk about as a kid. I didn't even know it existed till this podcast. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and you knew it was called a skeleton key. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it five as well because what? even as, it, as your little kid brain, you had the foresight to <laughs> hide the key and that you knew that if they find this key, I'm going to have to pay a shitload of money and 30 hours of community service ain't going to cover that. Uh huh. And, and oh, and the hiding of the drugs in the woods was a pretty yes. smart play I, as well. Okay, oh, no, you know what? I take it back. I'm going to give it a four. Ah. Because ah. why didn't you guys just go in the woods and get the car later? Because uh, they might have found the drugs at that point. Fair, fair. Can I ask, by the way, this was a public school? Oh, of course. This, yeah, this is how I know it was a public school is that they spent $40,000 on locks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody had a fucking uncle with a lock company. Yeah, because exactly. They this did town. not need, there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's like, yeah, Jimmy's got the locks on this yeah, one. Yeah, 40000 Just build a state. Now now you have to rate it yourself. How do you how do you review your own? This is like your, Look at back I'm, in time. How do you feel about your Honestly, plan? I'm going to give it a one. I don't really. I'm not impressed with myself. Oh, man. <laughs> you no, could have yeah. done better. <laughs> Say what? You could have done better you i could have done better i think like when you really when i really look at what the like it's almost i sometimes i feel like i'm wasting my whiteness you know because like i really think there's some level of like like you really could run amok as a as a as a youth uh in my uh town like there was really you could nothing. colonize a whole nation <laughs> yeah i mean no it's just i i think it was like it was just like wrong place wrong time you know it wasn't really like like i, I would have liked to have like organized some kind of like you know, a, a, a genuine heist or something like that. Like, Did we're going in for the fucking bag. You didn't use it. Did you use it after you you almost got caught? You gave up? Or did um, you use it a few more times after that? I prob No, I used it a few okay. more times. Yeah. No, I definitely had it. Because that was, a. I think it was my junior year. And so I still became a senior and all of that. And, you know. I felt, because when I had the key to the, just to the gate. I felt like I I felt like I was in Ocean's Eleven. I was like, I, they're like, how'd you get McDonald's? I was like, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, like shit like that. It's yeah, like, it really uh, it's a small thing that makes you feel big in a small town. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like a yeah. very it was just enough to be like, oh well, I got some kind of say in all of this. You know, this it, lady's not going to have a meltdown on me uh, being for because she's racist <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Well, uh, we appreciate you coming here and telling us about your uh, torrid tale of uh, breaking and entering. Uh, where can people find your work, Ryan? Oh, uh, uh, work. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm at I'm Ryan Donahue on the things. 
uh, and uh, at Ryan Donna Human on the things. That's pretty much it. I have a website, but I don't, you know. Oh, also watch Pause with Sam J. I've been writing on that show on HBO. Awesome. And that's a fun fucking show. So check that out. And uh, this hasn't been a formally announced, but I just found out today we got a season two coming up. So that's oh, awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, Congrats. hell yeah, dude. Hey, watch the you show. can afford to still not steal. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <that's great>. For <laughs> another year. For another year. Yeah. For another year, I baby. Love it. I love it. You know who's li- li- really lucky is Target stores. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, and I'm coming for you, bitches, in 2025. I got a feeling this fucking shit isn't going to ride too long. <laughs> Whoa.